my boy that spirit sprinkler, not Jerry Sprinkler. Oh, my young nigga wild like Jerry Sprinkler. Gang! Alright shit man, we all here bro, shit man. This is this 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 was unexpected. This was quick, this was a quick stop and pop, but we didn't get up last time I was in Denver. So I, bro was always telling me about you. Man, who we with bro? We out and we're in Colorado right now, but who we with? Cash Life Polo, Polo Hill Figure from Cash Life Bandits from Aurora, Colorado. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Aurora. So alright, off the rip. I said this shit like in the past when I came here. I looked at Aurora like, okay, this shit like Arlington or Irving where it's like, okay, it's, it's not Denver, but it's like, it's still, it's, it's like, it seems like a big city yeah, where it's yeah. like shit's still going on type shit, but then so, shit, niggas try to play me on it, made me feel like I was, I was, you know, calling it something that it wasn't or something like playing it down with some suburban shit, but I was just on some, it, it's not a major city that you would know unless you're out here. <clears throat> unless you're out here, yeah, a lot of out of towners. Shit, a lot of people from like Colorado Springs don't even know the difference between Denver and the world. You know For real? Saying? It's big, but it ain't that big. Yeah. Like a big, big city. So it is probably like an urban Texas or Arlington. Yeah. You know it's a small little part. When I listen to your music, bro, I mean, it, it's got that, like, what I feel like you guys out here in Colorado, y'all do kind of have your own sound in a way. It's a lot of different sounds, but one of the, like, main sounds I, I tend to hear is just, like, you know, that heavy bass line, like, up-tempo type shit. And, you know, kind of gets compared to, like, West Coast or Detroit type shit. And some, you got some songs like that. You know, I, I, I know you and uh, 100 Pack Savvy got that video on the Thizzler. I don't know if you got other shit on there, but what's up with that connection to, like, you know that sound and uh, it's really like all right so the sound i fuck with the detroit waves they sound because it's like a, a throwback you know what i'm saying new orleans cash money hot boy type tempo you know what i'm saying and that's the they the niggas that got me into rapping yeah. you know what i'm saying i always wanted to be from cash money or no limit and shit, you know what I'm saying? So them up tempo type of beats was always my style. Yeah. Then when it came back around, like a modern version, mm -hmm. and I start trying to rap on it, I'm like, oh, what the fuck? This is home. <laughs> this is what I've been missing the whole time, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Shit, it's something that I always stuck with. Something I always like. Fast, up tempo, heavy bass. I always love heavy bass beats. Yeah. Always. Where's your place out here in the scene, bro? Cause like you are one of the people, like you know, you, your name comes up when it, when people talk about Colorado rappers, especially around this area. Like you, you been like doing this shit for a minute, or like this shit really start to pick up speed in recent time or something? I've been doing this shit out here in the A for a minute. Shit, I dropped my first tape in like 2012. Yeah. And I had went to jail a couple times, been in the pen a couple times and shit, so it kind of slowed me down. But I always made an impact. Mm -hmm. I was really one of the first young Aurora rappers, you know what I'm saying? Like, I had my older brothers, it was like only two of them that was rapping. Yeah. But they was disconnected from our scene because they were so much older than us. So, yeah. I came in and I made it a shine for the A, I feel like, you know what I'm saying? Where it up. So, I came back home, everybody else from Aurora was doing their shit too, and I came back. Drop my little piece up in there and they just put it all together. Nah, for real. Shit, without even asking what exactly, you know, obviously got you in locked up and shit, but like, what was like, what's something that, like, obviously from, you know, I'm not looking back, I, I really learned from this shit. Like, what's something that you carried over to, like, today and going forward that you learned from that, just getting through that situation? Man, like, just to not be selfish, you know, think about, you know what I'm saying? Everything that I do affects somebody. Like, yeah. Kids and shit. So that's why I learned from the shit that I went through was just to not be selfish. Mm -hmm. Think about everybody when I make decisions. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. Man. So, nah, for real. And shit, another thing that I feel like you could just get, you, you, you got through. Like, bro, um, shit, I actually, because I talk to bro all the time, my, my boy Brent from my high, and I called him one day just checking on him, and he's like, yeah, bro, yeah, bro, Polo got shot type shit. Man, you got shot, bro. Like, you. And you're right here, right now, like, nigga, like, have you ever been shot before? Hell no, nah, that was the first time. Yeah. And that shit, boy, that shit hurt. And I feel like it happened at a time when you was, like, kind of, like, getting, you, you was really in grind mode, I feel like. Hell yeah, shit, we had put the, uh, 
the set the tone to me and Hunter Pack Savage. That's when y'all did that? Yep, we just put it on Thursday, like five days before I got shot. Maybe like four or five days before I got shot. I just released on Thursday. Damn. You know what I'm saying? So things was going up, but that's how I felt. Yeah. Boom. When you, uh, when that happened, did you, like, I, I mean, shit, like, what's going through your mind? I, like, did you think that you was going to die or anything, bro? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I thought I was going to die, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I mean, like, shit, the whole time I'm screaming for help and shit, all I could think is, all I could tell people is I got two daughters at home, like, help me, I gotta help me, I got two daughters at home, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. When the hospital people, when the ambulance came, I kept telling them, like, am I gonna be cool? Like, I got two daughters, I got two daughters. And that's all that really mattered to me at the time, so that's what I was fighting for, but, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, I ain't never been shot before, so when I did get shot and I seen where I got shot at, I'm like, oh shit, this could, this could possibly be over. Where'd you get shot at? Right here, my, uh, Damn. my torso. So they that. took out, uh, they took one of my kidneys out, they took my spleen out, and a piece of my pancreas. Man, does that affect, like, how does that affect your life going forward? Like, it'll be like, hard to breathe or move around or anything? Uh, at first, it was, it was bad. Like, when it was healing, I couldn't eat shit. Yeah. The only thing I could eat was like, oatmeal, boiled eggs, you know what I'm saying? A piece of toast, I couldn't eat shit. Damn. Everything that I ate was it was making my stomach swell up. Yeah. I had to go back to the hospital every time, you know what I'm saying? But as of right now, mm -hmm. I couldn't drink too much either. I could I couldn't even drink so much water in a day. They told me I just gotta chew ice and eat popsicles. Yeah. I couldn't even drink too much water. You know what I'm saying? But now once it is healed up and shit, all the scars on the inside is healed up, so it's a lot better. I don't really be having too much effects. When you when you go through something like that, like in this day of age, like I feel like people get praised for like, you know, like just traumatic shit like that, bro, where it's like, oh shit, you real nigga now. Like, do you feel like ever since that, do you feel like people like, is it, has it been a genuine extra support that's came through or it was like something where people realize like, damn, life's short, we need to start fucking with bro, like. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit of both. I mean, people start, Start looking at shit like that, like damn, life is short, you know what I'm saying? We got closer, I got closer to a lot of niggas that kind of started distancing, distancing from. Yeah. Um, it did also kind of make some people feel like, like I got stripes or some shit because I survived in a shot or something, but mm -hmm. I mean, that shit is not tight to me, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> shit, this shit ain't fucking normal. No. I'm saying the type of shit that we go through, the street shit, this shit ain't fucking normal. People don't just be getting shot randomly and not know who shot them. And yeah. It's not even normal to just be plotting to shoot on somebody. Like, we ain't even normal. The type of people that we are and the type of environment we come from, this shit ain't normal to the real world, you know what I'm saying? So, when motherfuckers be like, oh yeah, you a gangster, you know what I'm saying? You hard, you a legend and shit. I'm like, no, nah, my nigga, I didn't do nothing. I went through some traumatic shit that. Nigga blessed. Be going through, you know what I'm saying? I'm blessed. Yeah. If anything, I'm blessed. You know what I'm saying? God saved me. Matter of fact, even when I was in the hospital, I'm thinking I'm cool and shit. I got my leg is all fucked up. They got me all tubed up and shit. Mm -hmm. I'm waiting on a visit from my mom. Next thing I know, I wake up back downstairs in the ER. They talking about we have to take you to another surgery. You had internal bleeding, so I had yeah. almost passed again. You know what I'm saying? I'm like. That shit's not fun. That shit ain't nothing to be proud of. None of that shit. I'm just blessed that I made it through. That's a good way to look at it, bro. Cause like some people, like they think that they want this shit. Like you know, they rap about things. They they you know emulate things. Not realizing like some people, this is their real life. Like they yeah. really, this is not yeah. just entertainment type shit. And um, you know, when, when shit like that happens, bro. Like even if that to happen out here, bro. Like. That's the type of shit that people wouldn't expect outside in about Colorado. Even though there's a hood everywhere that is real shit going on everywhere, but yeah. nobody thinks that people are doing this shit like that. So it's really like that out here. It's, it's really like that out here, for real, for real. Yeah. And it's fucked up because it's like certain parts. Like I'm from Aurora, you know what I'm saying? And in mm -hmm. Aurora, it's different than Denver. So you got how so? They got they got their hoods like so the bloods they over here in a certain section of Park Hill you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. and you know that's where the bloods is at yeah. you know that's Park Hill you don't fuck around over there if you ain't from there yeah then you got the east side you know that's where the Crips is at now them niggas they got blocks and shit so it be like the 31st niggas 32nd 33rd you know what I'm saying type shit like that yeah but you know who is where yeah versus in the world it's a little bit of 
it's everybody is everywhere. It ain't sectioned off at all, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Niggas is all going to the same stories. You never gonna know when you run into your ops. Man. Saying? It can happen at any moment. You can be with your mom, your kids, you know what I'm saying? There's no boundaries out there, so it's kinda of fucked up. Yeah. A lot of shootings, a lot of a lot of bullshit, a lot of police activity. They on every corner, all day, every day. You know what I'm saying? Does the music play any part into like how much of an effect does like rap music and just the music aspect of things play into some of the shit that happens? Like, or do you think it's like, nah, shit, we still really just trying to get our foot going with the music shit? Yeah, we still trying to get our foot going in it because you know we like we also got to break through gentrification. You know what I'm saying? Because out here they ain't trying to let nothing blow up. That's not nah. awesome hood shit. They yeah. ain't trying to let nothing blow. They, they ain't like trying the to image. let no black shit blow up. Yeah, they like much. the image of Colorado. Yeah, they is. don't want the image like that. So we still trying to get our foot through the door like that. You know what I'm saying? We trying to break through this gentrification, and that's the hardest part about it all. Honestly, yeah. not nah. breaking through that shit. Yeah, nah, the shit going on everywhere. But like, I could see that out here. Like, I was one of those people, man. Until I really came out here, kicked it for a week. I, you know, let me tell it. I was just expecting snowboards, mountains, skateboards, every yeah. skiing and all that shit. Yeah, see, half the people from out here ain't never even did none of that shit. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, like, that's what I'm finding out, bro. You know, y'all just talking about like shit. Shit, we barely go in the mountains type shit. Yeah. Um, fucking, uh, oh, shit. What, um, it's 2021. It's a whole new year. Fresh slate. Is there anything that, you know what I'm saying, that you know? Man, this is this is this is what we on this year. This is the campaign, or this is the goal, or I mean, some people don't like to reveal their shit. But is there anything that you would do differently that you haven't did previously? Uh, I don't feel like I have been as consistent as I should be. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? When I first came home, I dropped like seven videos right out the bat in six months, but then I stopped. You know what I'm saying? So this year, my goal is to release. I'm dropping a hundred songs. I don't know how many <laughs> songs I'm gonna record, but I'm dropping a hundred. Yeah, and I want a video to at least eighty of them motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying that's Damn. why I'm coming this year for 2021. That's a lot. That's a lot of work. Yeah, you know what I'm saying and I feel like I ain't never grinded that hard for it. So it's like it's my make or break year, basically. Nah, for you know real. Saying? You um, so when you posted that video, you, you, the song with you and 100 Pack Sav, y'all got that shit on Fizzler. You know, obviously you're you know got a pretty good working relationship with My High Minute, which is like you know one of the you know, pages and uh, platforms that I got out here in Colorado. Um, have you always been hit to knowing that, okay, I got to fuck with other platforms and shit, or is that something that you feel like the platforms is really, like, blowing up? It, nah, that shit is, like, I always knew how important that shit was, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. Niggas used to tell me I was before my time, because it will be, like, shit, like, when Vine first came out, Vine was like a month old and I'm telling niggas like, bro, this is gonna be the biggest shit. Like, yeah. This shit is gonna be the biggest shit. This is how niggas is gonna blow up. You know what I'm saying? Same with TikTok. Before TikTok started blowing up, like this is how niggas is finna start blowing up. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So I already seen like what blogs do. You know what I'm saying? I've been into magazines my whole life. I always read Double XL, Source, you know what I'm saying? My whole life. I always Not knew what real. blogs do, so I always knew how important it was. Yeah. It was just crazy because I felt like people didn't know that shit. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to keep the game to myself. Yeah, yeah. But as I was thinking that, it just started, like, it just started coming out of everywhere. Like, everybody yeah. started realizing it at the same time. And I didn't even have to say nothing no more. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, this is cool. This is perfect. Damn, mile high minute. I, well, the most I was saying was, Denver, we need a block out here in Denver. You know yeah. Because everybody else had one. Then, boom, grand popped out with the mile high minute. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Never, man. With shit like that, because I talk to bro all the time, so I be catching his trials and tribulations with the shit, because it's like it's actually. See, I stay, at, you know, I'm out in DFW in Texas. Like everybody yeah. outside of it knows, we got shit loads of pages and platforms. Hell yeah. It's kind of tougher on someone like himself, where it's like, okay, it's only a couple of y'all, so therefore, what you posting and what you saying or doing, you're gonna catch a lot of flack and heat. How? And he's he's not even that type of personality. We got personalities out in Texas. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? People would even consider me that. You know, but I'm a chill one. Yeah. How do you be feeling about bloggers? The, the way they post things, the way they go about shit. Um, you know, do you feel like they kind of like you know put them insert themselves in the shit too much? Or I mean, nah, they they got a job. You know what I'm saying? And some bloggers get paid to post the shit that they pay that mm -hmm. they post. You know what I'm saying? It's like like I said, everybody got a job. 
this is what your fans want to see. The fans want to see what's really going on. You know what I'm saying? Rather it's in your favor or not. Yeah. You know I'm saying rather some fucked up shit happened to you or you did some fucked up shit to somebody. Fans want to see what's really going on behind the scenes. You know what I'm saying? And that's gonna bring you whatever kind of traffic. They're gonna come to your page. They're gonna come to your YouTube. Yeah. Your next song gonna drop. They're gonna want to see if you talk about it. You know what I'm saying? So I don't take that shit too offensive I just don't like the fact that rappers tend to trick on the bloggers for this shit yeah. you know what I'm saying for, for stupid ass shit like mm-hmm. man he ain't doing nothing but informing the rest of the world on what's going on with you you know what I'm saying you're just an artist you know what I'm saying it'd be half the time you put this shit out yourself on your own Instagram now you mad that this nigga posted it with, with a certain type of caption yeah like you know what I'm saying it ain't, it ain't no different though it's the same video nah for you know, real I think the Bloggers deserve more respect than they get, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, sure. Because that's the biggest outlet that we got right now with the internet. Yeah, no, it's crazy, like, how, like, you know, music and hip hop is, like, shifted to, yeah, just as simple as, yo, blog pages are the new news channel. Yeah. But, you know exactly. what I'm saying? It's crazy. Um, do you feel like you guys, do you, do you think that you guys got to get more pages and things like in platforms out here like that? Or do you think that you just got to build with the ones that you guys got? I know there's, you know, we got Maha, we got Bro up here, Street Nerds and shit yeah, like that. Yeah, it, it's a little bit of both. We do need a little bit more. Mm-hmm. We, be, we need a little bit more that are on different type of times. So we got Street Nerds, he's on some hood shit, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? And then we got Mile High Mini, where he's like borderline hood shit, but he don't step too deep into that shit, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But then we got like... We don't got nobody who's looking at the singers. You know what I'm saying? Mm. We got singers out here. We don't got nobody who's really looking at the entertainment scene as a whole out here. It's like yeah. the bloggers we got is just focusing on certain artists, the mm. artists that they're already connected with, you know what I'm saying? So I feel like it just gotta spread out and from them, mm. you know what I'm saying? We need more bloggers and we just need to work and just build this shit up. You know what I'm saying? We gotta actually support our bloggers too. Yeah. We gotta support the bloggers because they gonna push everybody. They pushing the whole town. Yeah. How do you be feeling about the list things? I done seen. I, I mean, it's, maybe it's because I follow so much Colorado shit. I ain't gonna lie. I went to Colorado last year. I gained probably like over two hundred Colorado pe- people. I be so seeing that shit. I be tuned in and I'm watching yeah. the shits. Different pages. I see different lists. You pop up on a lot of them. Whether you're not you're at the top spot or at the bottom spot, you're on the list a lot. How do you be feeling? How do you feel about list and? Do you want to have that top spot or? Does it- <laughs> <laughs> nah, I don't care for that. When it comes to like being a top artist in the city, mm-hmm. I don't care at all. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to be the top artist, mm-hmm. the top artist. Period. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Not just Colorado's top artist. Don't nobody even know us out here like that. You yeah. know what I'm saying it's not, it's not a trophy to me. But when the list do drop. What it shows to me is how deep in numbers we are. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So if you could make a list of 50 Colorado rappers, to me that says we got a good ass scene out here. We got a oh, lot of music out here. You know what I'm saying? That's how I look at it. A lot of everybody else, they just want to fight. Like, oh no, why is he number five? Why am I number 15? Why is he number two? Oh, all his favorites. I'm just like, man, look at how many of us is on here. You let's see the bigger picture, yeah. Yeah, like, let's work. It's a bigger picture. Let's just push the box. Fuck it. Yeah. Fuck who's in what place. So when I be reposting it, I'll take off all the numbers. I'll block out all the numbers and shit and just have the artist's names and faces. And yeah. Shit. Like, y'all see this? Y'all see how many of us it is? Let's make something happen. Tell me if I'm wrong. Um, not, I want to gas you up, bro, but it seems like, you know, you're tapped in with a lot of people, other artists and people I'm familiar with out here. I, one thing I noticed, you got like features with a lot of people, bro. Like, like, how does that shit work? Is it all genuine shit? Because I, I feel like out here, one of the problems is a lot of the artists, everybody does kind of want that spot. I know you say you don't, but everybody's like, kind of like shit. I'm like, uh, I, I don't yeah, have to yeah, fuck with, I'm just fucking with myself type yeah, shit. Yeah. But you got songs with, you know, 100 Pack Savvy. Uh, the, I want to say, I want to say, I, I, bro, he from Park Hill, OG kind of oh, guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, he came out to Texas once. I should. We, I, I wasn't in town when he tried to tap in. And uh, oh my girl, name Renee. Yeah, that's one of my favorite songs actually. Uh, uh, hold uh, me up, hold yeah, me up. Yeah, that's that's my shit. Yeah, for sure. For How sure. does that shit work it, out, man? Like, why are you, why are you so into like working with other people and shit? Shit, man. Because it everybody, I fuck with everybody for real. You know what I'm saying? I've been like, 
I don't like to say the word popular, but I've been like popular out here for a long ass time. Like I grew up with everybody. I always used to dance and shit. Used to be at all the parties. You know what I'm saying? I always fucked with everybody. So yeah. Now that we older and doing music and shit, I be connecting with my childhood friends pretty much. You know what I'm saying? Like that nigga Honey Pack Savvy, him and my little brother, my blood brother, they best friends. You know oh word. They been best friends since them niggas was like 13, 12, 13. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And then they, we go back since she was like 15, you know what I'm saying? That's been my people's forever. Yeah. PH Wax, him and my my pops, they from the same hood. Yeah. You know what I'm, saying? So I'm just connected to a lot of people out here and I do like to work with other artists because it brings out my creative energy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It brings out my creative energy. And then after I leave this session, now I'm like, okay, now I got a good idea of how I want to record next time. Nah, for real. Yeah. If I had to ask you, um, man, before, before I hit you with some of my rapid ending questions, bro, like, on some, where you're at with this shit now, what's, like, the best advice you would give to, like, say yourself, if you, your younger self, or at the beginning of this shit, knowing what you know now, like, the good shit, and what's, like, some, like, bad, the good and the bad of the shit? Uh, I would say... One thing that I would tell my younger self to do is to stay consistent, to stay like internet savvy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? When I was younger, to stay internet savvy because that's gonna get you a lot of waves. You could get a lot of waves through a lot of doors yourself. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying you could meet a lot of different people just by being internet savvy because you know how to weave around and find different shit. Not for real. You know what I'm saying so. I would tell myself, you know, pay attention to that shit. Pay attention, just listen, pay attention to your surroundings, and don't stop, you know what I'm saying? This shit get hard, it get rough, you know what I'm saying? I done broke down, I done cry. Matter of fact, I'm about to drop a tape on uh, February 1st, mm -hmm. on my birthday, and shit, just two days ago, I lost all the sessions to every song. Goddamn. That shit broke me down. It broke me the fuck down. I was fucking sick, but then I realized I still got my MP3 files. Yeah. I'm just like, damn, I can't mix it no more than it's already mixed, but fuck, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, no matter what, just push through that shit, that shit gonna hurt, but just stay consistent, just stay consistent, it's nah, gonna pay off. You know nah, that's real. Shit, I'm gonna you with some of my ending questions, bro, because like, I'm hoping I'm gonna come back out here in a month. I don't care if it's a, that's a quick turnaround, but shit, we probably gonna have to just get another one in. Yeah, Every that. time I come through, I gotta tap in. I know, Brent, I know, I know bro, I'm bring me around everybody like yeah, this he, yeah. he's really big on like bro you gotta get up with bro you gotta do, you know what I'm saying <laughs> yeah, yeah. so some of these are gonna be finished the sentences and just some random questions you can answer the best of your ability you don't wanna answer feel free not to um, I'm gonna start off with some finished the sentences growing up when there was no food at home or in the fridge I was eating finish the sentences shit bread with syrup on it syrup sandwiches I already know not for real <laughs> <laughs> alright um, say what you want about me but don't say finish the sentence Anything about my kids. Man, that was real. Period. That was real. Nobody's ever said that one before. That's that's the realest one. Um, niggas don't really know. Finish the sentence. Niggas don't really know how versatile I am. Yeah. They think I'm just a trap rapper. Yeah. Yeah, hell nah. You'd be on that. I'd be awesome. J. Cole shit if I want to. Yeah. Kendrick, you know what I'm saying? That shit's just boring to me. Not for, not for real, I feel like. Nah, it's... To the, the generation, what it is now, man, you know, if it's like, if the shit's slapping and it's turning, you know, that's gonna catch the ear. That's gonna catch the ear. Nah, for real. Okay, um, the good thing about, t actually, before I get to that one, um, there could be anything you have a lifetime, endless, limitless uh, sponsorship or endorsement of anything, what would it be? Damn, that's a good ass Lifetime. Mm. Shit, Cardi Cardi Glasses. Nah, for real, the Cardi's on God. Nah, nah, for real, because like, the motherfuckers ain't cheap, so boy. Yeah, nah. nah, for real. Um, all right. The good thing about Thomas music is you never forget where you were the first time you heard it. What's something that if you listen to it right now, it always takes you back to that first time when you heard it. Ooh, man. One, it's not even that old. This young Dolph motherfucker play with your bitch. <laughs> God, he did. Yeah. Oh, I'll never forget it. Yeah. Matter of fact, it's two of them that's not that old. It's that one and then motherfucking Mad Star when I first heard it. Future. Yeah, that was life changing. 
Oh man, nah, that shit was a game changer. Nah, for real. I remember real, I was both of those. And I've seen Dolph perform that shit live. That shit goes up. Oh my god. Um, Spirit Springer Special, man. If there was any song you could be on the original version of, this song featuring Polo, what song would it be? Any song all time, any genre. Any song all time. <laughs> that's all. B I B I, little John. Nah, that was a hard beat. Yeah, that motherfucker would be hard. Nah, that's that's, that's maybe the classic. Even, maybe my favorite beat of all time is still tipping. Yeah, even that one too. Still tipping, nah, that's, Mike Jones. That's one of our two Texas anthems, man. It's either that or want to be a baller. You know what I'm saying? Those oh, are yeah. our two classic. anthems. Nah, for real. Who, uh, on a quick one, shit. Because I watched it for the I gotta get this. Who had the hardest verse on on still tipping? That's like the greatest debate. <laughs> so yeah, slim. Paul Wall was slaughtering shit though, but yeah. I'm gonna go with Slim. Nah, he he started it off. Oh my god, he did. Mike Jones is that's a hard ass. Man. It's that's the greatest debate ever. It, it's everybody's gonna always have a different answer. I'm gonna actually say Mike Jones. Fuck that. His flow was in pocket like a motherfucker. Yeah, he made he showed us who the fuck he was. Yeah, not nah, for real. All right, bro. Um, shit. Last two finish sentences. Uh, Polo is Polo was finish the sentence. Polo is genuine. Always will be genuine. Polo was doing features for free, but now y'all niggas gotta pay me. Nah, for real, we need the bag. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Last one. Uh, Polo showed the world. Finishes it. Man, Polo showed the world that you could bounce back from anything. Fall down seven times, get up eight times. You know what I'm saying? Nah, that's Don't real. Let stop you. Nah, that's real. I mean, uh, what's the uh, what's the first song they should search up if they watch if they watch this whole interview? What's the first song or video or what should they search up on YouTube after they watch this? Search up the bounce back, Polo Hill figure, the bounce back. Polo Hill figure, the bounce back, man. This one, first time, not the last time. That's that's my that's last what I always time. tell everybody on the first time, bro. Because we always check back in and we always hopefully we we both upgrade. You know what, what I'm saying? Uh, is there any way I can get a shout out to Spirit Springer, bro? Yeah, of course. Shout out to Spirit Springer, man. Real motherfucker, man. Man, appreciate you. Hey, what's real quick? Polo Hill fit like? Is that just like just simple as just the? No, nigga, I like the clothes. I don't even like the clothes. <laughs> so what it went into? I came up with uh, my first. My original name was Polo Red. Okay. Before the cologne even came out, and I just wanted a fly ass name because I just felt like I was a fly ass nigga. It's when I did wear a lot of polo. Yeah. And my favorite color is red. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So I went with polo red, felt like it was fly. Yeah. And then, like, niggas wasn't fucking with it as I, as I was getting older, so I'm watching this Tommy Hilfiger shit, this dapper from uh, Dan shit, and he said something that clicked, and it was like, what Tommy was basically was saying was, this shit ain't for y'all anyway. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I didn't do this shit for y'all. This ain't for y'all niggas, you know what I'm saying? And that's how I feel like. I don't do this for y'all, you know what I'm saying? This shit's for me, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I gravitated towards that, so I just like, fuck it, I'm running with the name. Polo Hill figure, it's a fine shit, and went together. It's, it's different, if you ask me. You yeah, know what I'm saying? nah, that's a good, I ain't gonna lie, I would've never guessed that was the explanation, because I know what you're talking about um, on the shit, like yeah, hearing you talk about that shit, yeah. yeah. So that, that's, that is pretty creative, bro. Well, yeah. shit, bro, we got Polo Hill figure out here, Aurora, Colorado, yes, Spray sir. Springer, quick layover. We're coming back. We're going to tap back in and get another full interview. Yeah, let's do that. Man, appreciate you, bro. Sure.